And now we're welcoming Melanie Chen. Thank you so much for being here. The Managing Director of UHY Advisors, and she also leads the China Group. So nice to talk to you today. Very nice to meet you. Talk to us a little bit about your specialty with your firm. Um, UHY is the top 20 accounting firm in the U.S. And uh, I'm responsible for our China practice. Basically, we advise our U.S.-based companies doing business in China, and vice versa. We assist the Chinese companies with their public offerings and uh, um, business investment in the U.S. Of course, there's been a lot of news coming out of China lately about the economy and investments, and also the news about the uh, stimulus and the bond defaults. Can you give us an idea of the overall economic climate? Um, let me comment on the bond defaults and its impact on M&A for China first. Um, in three weeks, there are two corporate bond defaults. The first one is Shanghai Shaori Sonar Allergy uh, defaulted on its 8-9 million um, yuan interest payment um, in late March and uh, followed by a manufacturer of construction materials based in Jiangsu province defaulted on its um, domestic uh, junk bond. Um, those defaults certainly have shaken investors' confidence in China's credit market and it also has slowed down the bond offerings in China. However, I do believe there are some positive impact out of those bond defaults. First, I believe those defaults are wake up calls to Chinese investors, both corporations and individuals, because in the past three decades, there's no single corporate bond default. Uh, that's not realistic, uh, because in China, it's like anywhere else. Risk it do exist in bond market, and I believe its uh, market is correcting itself and become more matured and realistic. And if those differences lead investors to be more cautious and do their due diligence, that will be a positive impact on develop a market to be more healthy and fair to investors. And also in the past decades, investors just blindly chase bond offerings with the highest uh, coupon without paying any attention to the creditworthiness of uh, issuers. Uh, that's not uh, the market you want to be in. So I believe that uh, uh, it will only help China improve uh, its uh, stability and the credibility of its bond market. And there's another positive impact, I believe, is that it will accelerate China's outbound investment because Chinese investors now will look beyond the China market and uh, shift some of their investment overseas and to the more stable and well-established markets like the U.S. and the Europe. And then what about the stimulus package? Um, the stimulus package, in my opinion, it's not a typical short-term uh, stimulus type of uh, uh, package we see here in the U.S. Um, I believe it's more about the policy that executes Chinese government's long-term strategy to sustain a stable growth in China. Because the stimulus package has three components. One is to reduce tax for small businesses and low profit business. And the second component is to develop a regime to provide loan to uh, developers that focus on developing affordable housing. And the third is about uh, investment in railway. And those are consistent with China's long-term strategy to narrow the gap of the rich and the poor and develop the social equality and overall wealthness. So uh, um, I believe that um, um, its short-term impact on the M&A market and the capital market uh, as a result of a stabilist uh, plan is uh, negligible. Can you talk to us a little bit about the uh, tax and accounting considerations that Chinese investors need to keep in mind when making investments here? Um, yes, um, I have seen many Chinese companies that uh, make uh, two basic mistakes in their investment structure when they make investment in the U.S. Uh, one is that um, 
uh, Chinese companies um, without consulting with any professional advisors uh, tend to like to set up uh, with hold, uh, intermediate holding companies in jurisdictions like Hong Kong, BVI, Cayman Islands, and uh, um, those jurisdictions are good places if they their goal is to come to the U.S. and uh, make uh, public offerings. But since U.S. does not have um, tax treaties with those tax heaven jurisdictions, everything that uh, um, out of uh, the U.S. paid like dividends, royalties, interest, and uh, services, when they paid out of their U.S. subsidiary to their BVI or Cayman Island parent holding company, will be subject to 30% withholding tax. Those 30% withholding tax could be, you know, reduced to 10% or 5% if they have properly considered other jurisdictions that have good tax treaty with the U.S. Another typical mistake they made is that they like to set up LLC in the U.S. There are some tax planning techniques that work very well for U.S. shareholders that could become nightmare for Chinese shareholders or foreign shareholders in general. For example, you know, LLC could be treated by default as partnership, as corporation. And uh, um, it, it works fine for US investors. They don't please escape the corporate level tax and the pay individual income tax. But for single foreign member LLC, it will by default will be treated as a branch, which means they will pay tax as a corporation at 35%, and then the earnings will be subject to 30% withholding tax, regardless of whether it's distributed or not to their parent company. So there will be that double taxation. There's various ways to uh, reduce those tax costs, but they need to make planning in advance before they close the deal, before they set up their operation in the U.S. Of course, after the set, uh, the establishment of their operations in the U.S. or make operations in the U.S., there are still opportunities to remediate those uh, uh, incorrect investment structures, but the cost will be higher if, than if they do it before the investment is made. Great advice. If only they listen to you before they make these investments, Melanie. Thank you so much. Wonderful information. Appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you.